Good morning everyone, it's Joker, and today we are back with another slime video. And look at this, we have everyone's favorite waifu from Overlord, Albedo. And you know what slime did to Albedo? They did her very, very dirty. By making her pretty much shit, actually. They, they did not make her a good character, they made her very restrictive, and it's very, very saddening. But, but, the current meta that is Primal Demon focused is wanting you to use space characters. And, thankfully, Albedo is a space character. She's a space magic character, but, you know, <laughs> we gotta take what we can get. So in case you don't know, because you weren't playing during the Overlord collab, she is an AoE space uh, alt that gives everybody attack 5%. Okay, fine, whatever. Her first skill, Guaranteed Stun, which, you know, is is cool, awesome, and then gives Stern of Spirit or a Wholehearted Devotion characters a 40% stun strike, which means that if they're stunned, you do an extra 40% damage. It's just like a normal attack buff, except it's conditional on stun. Well, these two characters, or these two forces right here, not really that big, which is why it's kind of shit, because we have Octogram Guy, who also stuns at 25, and it's just a stun, but it's 25 points. Her second skill is Despair, which is a joke of a skill, and then raises green gauge alt gain by 50%, which, fine, cool, whatever. Uh, we have two skills that are not very good, but she is space and she is AoE. So we're going to try and make her good today. And by good, uh, there's like 10,000 parentheses and apostrophes and quotation marks around that. Uh, because it's going to be very difficult. But, but, we can do some fun things in this beatdown battle. So if we go into the beatdown, and we go, we're going to go into Inferno 1, by the way. If we check out the quests, Dagrel, you know, Attack up, synergy resistance up, seals the crit, and okay, fine, whatever. Um, all allies alt resistance by 50% up for four turns. Gives everybody wind attack, counter attack, and counter power if someone dies. Frey, though. Frey is the important one, because one, she is the one that nerfs greens and oranges, which is pretty impactful. And then gives magic resistance. And seals stun skills. This is very important, these two skills right here. More so than, I think, even this right here. The magic attack resistance and the sealing of body and spirit skills is what we're going to try and nullify today. Because if you leave Albedo up front for, like, all five turns or so of the first fight, for the beginning of the fight, there will be a time where you are not sealed here anymore. And you can stun Frey. And if we run a proper team, we could potentially just keep her stun locked. And that's what we're going to do today. And in order to really, really, really make this fun, we're going to use this team. So, Protector, Overlord, Rimuru, Nabe. We're bringing Octogram Guy. Isis to offset that green orb debuff. Shizu, because she's got the ult swap to greens, and she's got a generic buff. And then Albedo, with her stun and stun strike. So, in a perfect world, we will be able to both stun Frey consistently and forever and also use guy to stun somebody else because you know we've got it probably dagrel uh because he gives the you know synergy resistance and all that and stupid stuff dino is the least of a threat and plus sometimes he changes our entire hand to greens which is helpful and so nabe will orb change if we've got stern of spirit which we have one two three stern of spirit characters she's also got a blue convert isis has a blue convert plus the green buff Rimuru gives extra skill point gain on greens, so even though we're not going to get a whole bunch of protection gauge, uh, we will get a butt-ton of points. And because he resets skills, it means that we can keep things relatively cheap for a long time. So we're going to see if this works out. I know this is a very long intro, but I have to, I have to do the lead-up, right? So we're going to try and see how long it takes us to continue to buff Albedo to the point where we can actually beat these enemies that have 1.7 million HP. It ain't gonna be pretty. And it also ain't gonna be a live run. So I'm gonna record this and then I'll come back and I'll voice it over. So hold your horses, fellas. And ladies. And people. Human beings. Okay, so starting out, we're gonna let this ride until we get to turn 5 where we actually are able to stun. 
So we're going to take Guy out of here. We don't actually get sealed on that stun skill until like turn two or something. So Guy is okay in the back. It's just that once we get that seal applied for the body and spirit skills, we want to make sure that Albedo and Guy are up front consistently. And Guy, you know, he doesn't have any dupes in him. He's not attached to a fire support unit, so his stats are not great. But, you know, we do have nice skill points right here and an orb change that we can definitely work which uh do i do i remember this do it do i am i stupid i think i might be stupid here mm. no okay we're since the nami orbs all right cool that works too that'll give us more points awesome i recorded this like two days ago or something like that <laughs> okay let's uh so we're on turn three. So there's the seal right there. There's the body and spirit seal. Now Guy and Albedo have to be up front for the next two turns, I think. Which is fine because we're going to get binded anyways. So it's not really that much of a loss. But that's to make sure that we can let the debuff run its course. And on turn five or turn six, whatever turn it is, we are able to stun at least Frey. Frey is the primary person that we need to stun because she is the one that will reseal the stun skills if we let her go free. So she must stay consistently stunned for pretty much the rest of the fight. And because we are continually stacking element damage, it means that everybody will do more and more and more and more damage as time goes on, which this is gonna go for a long ass time. It's just, we need to have points. We need to be able to reset skills, you know, to a point. Um, obviously this run is gonna take a long time and we're not gonna be able to always cycle Rimuru every single turn. So there are times where we're going to have to seal and not have them at low cost. And eventually, we're just going to cost like 100 points a stun. But if we can get a lot of those points back, because I think we get like almost 500 points on a full send of greens, even if they are nerfed, um, I mean, that's a lot. That's a lot of points, okay? So turn four, Dino, I'm not paying attention apparently, so I'm just going to let him know. There we go. Okay. So we have one more turn. There's a full hand of greens. That's awesome. Because if we haven't already, we can bring in Isis. No, we haven't. And use her green buff. And the charm that we're running is the protection gauge on greens. Which means combined with Isis, we're getting 90% protection gauge. Which offsets the debuff by 10%. So right now we're getting a 10% gauge increase buff. Because they debuff by 80, we're doing 90. So at least we're not losing out on too much here right so it, it, it's fine but we can see that the icons for the seal are blinking above albedo and guy that means that it's about to leave next turn so we need to ensure that we have enough points to at least stun Frey next turn which we're gonna because we're gonna have almost 300 points and the stun right now is only gonna cost 25 or 55 depending on who you use first but at from this moment on no matter what you do, this is a very good orb change right here. You must keep Frey stunned. One, because she keeps debuffing stuff. Two, she'll reseal the skill. So here on turn six, we're now going to bring uh, somebody in. Uh, all right, we'll use the green buff again just to make sure it you know keeps on uh, keeps on staying on the greens. We'll bring Naba in. We'll be able to use just one of her orb changes right here, the Stern of Spirit one. And then we have 234 points. So let's stun Frey. Boom. And then let's stun Daggerl. And now this means that both Albedo and Nabe will get that extra 40% stun strike. So they will do extra damage against people who are stunned. So Guy's doing one, 248, 178 damage. <laughs> Is that what that said? I think it did. Okay. That's fucking terrible. All right. But they have a lot of magic resistance and defense skills right now, so we're not going to do a lot. But here, not a great hand. But we need to make sure that we can keep at least Frey stunned. Keeping Daggerl stunned is a nice cherry on top of the cake. It definitely does help, but Frey is the primary target. So you're stunned, you're stunned. We've used Rimuru to reset the stun skills, and now we we 269 points. Perfect. Let's bring uh, somebody in. Well, actually, we're not going to be able to, really. So, okay. That's a hand right there. I guess we might bring Shizu in for Guy and get five greens this turn. 
Is that what we're going to do here? E yeah. Okay. So we're going to have to make do. Now, what I'm not doing right here is I'm not using the Despair skill with Albedo, which we certainly can, right? The Despair effect stacks up to 20 times, and it'll, what, it lowers alt resistance at a, at a you know, maximum capacity by 100%, which definitely would help. But I'm more concerned about prioritizing skill points and the stuns more than the Despair skill, so we'll start using it towards the end of the fight. Certainly not now, though. I will always want to make sure that we have enough. So in the early game, not worried about it. They're getting ults, but it's only going to be Dino who's ulting. And since Daggerel is the one that buffs Wind Attack, Dino, by himself, really doesn't do that much damage. I'm not too afraid of him, even though we're going to pretty much let him run free. I need to keep Daggerel stunned because he is an AoE, and I need to keep Fry stunned because she's going to, you know, we need to keep stunning. So things have to work out this way. Uh, that's a weird hand that I just did right there. I don't know why I brought Isis in. Okay, well, it doesn't matter anyways. I should have orb changed first. Okay, well, that's a misplay right there. But we have to keep her stunned. So now what we're going to do is we're going to turn up the music and we're going to go hyper speed through this because I'm not going to sit here for another 30 minutes and try and narrate this fight, which is pretty much just get green orbs, keep Frey stunned. So hold on to your seats, fellas. So, we're now on turn 20, 12 turns later, and you can see we haven't really done that much damage. Our stuns now cost 100 points right now. We are going to use Rimuru to reset that, but it's still 80 points now. So, both of our stuns are going to cost the same, right? Because, you know, one started at 55, one started at 25. At least they're both consistent now, but we have, for the last 20 turns, kept Frey and Daggerel stunned, so they have not been able to do jack shit, which means that they have not been able to seal our stuns, they've not been able to raise their magic resistance, and they've not been able to get any of the major green debuffs. So, I mean, yes, this has taken a long-ass time. However, now we're starting to stack the despair skills on. Again, like I said earlier, I wasn't too concerned about it in the early game. I probably could have started doing it much, much earlier. It would have helped out our damage, as little and pathetic as it is. But <laughs> but we, we are technically making progress. 47k a hit now against Frey because of the stun strike, because of all the stacked element buffs from Rimuru. Um, okay, her attack got lowered. That's not great. But... Again, you know, we're, we're at 941 skill points. We're looking good, so we could pretty much use anything. So now I'm not afraid to use Despair. I'm not afraid to have, you know, 100 point stuns because we are going to make it all back as long as we can continue to get six sends of greens or at least five greens. You know, we want six to maximize the protection gauge so we can recycle Rimuru over and over and just make ourselves, you know, better and better. Dino doesn't like Guy, though. As you can see, he has much, much lower HP. And again, he has no dupes. He doesn't have, like, a type, a same type support slot unit underneath him. And Dino loves hitting him. I don't know why. He just doesn't like Guy. So he's looking a little low right there. So at this point, I'm really trying to not have him up front too often. Because I don't need him to take any excess damage. Once we kill Frey, it's like we're not in danger of having our stun sealed, so we could just run with Albedo to seal it or stunning Daggerel. But, you know, I, I want to keep the fun going, so I want to continue to keep everybody stunned. So now here, 
Nar Nabe is going to be stronger than Guy, because she's running under the correct leader skill and all that, so we're going to keep them stunned. We're going to continue to reset their skill cost and continue to stack up the element damage. And now we're using Shizu and her debuff, right? Because it's alt resistance down and weakness strike. And at least Albedo can take advantage of both of those. But here I'm going to bank on Albedo killing Frey. So we stun Daggirl and Dino now. And we pray that between these two AoE alts, we can take out Frey with all the stacks on. It's just that, you know, we're not going to get that stun strike against Frey. So that's the danger. So we, we are playing a dangerous game right here. And we're also not going to orb change. So... Albedo, 490k against Frey, because we crit. Awesome. <laughs> that means that she's dead, so we no longer have to worry about having our stun skills sealed. And now I mean, we're doing good AoE damage, right? You know, that was pretty good. A free hand of greens right there. Awesome. And now Dino and Daggeral are, you know, half HP or lower, and we're on turn goddamn 23. So, like, Jesus. <laughs> This is the this is probably one of the dumbest things I've ever done for an actual like battle video, right? Like I've done the infinite burn, I've done the um the unlimited vengeance videos. Those were stupid. This I think is more stupid because it's it's going 30 turns in a fight that should honestly take 8 or less because I'm trying to make a really bad unit be somewhat useful and justify me summoning for her and spending money for her because <laughs> when the fuck am i ever gonna use her again guys i don't know we're on turn 24 dagger's not dead yet dino's halfway down uh we need an ex alt with albedo again to do you know that really really good damage but we're not crit sealed anymore so we can crit uh, if we brought a crit unit, which we didn't. If we brought Ainz or something, like, we, we certainly could. Uh, I don't really know if I want to bring Ainz over Isis, though. Because her orb change has come in handy for these 24 turns. And her green buff, you know, is cheap, right? Ainz has the Despair skill, which gives that 40%, 50% protection gauge buff to greens. But you wouldn't be able to use that till turn 6, right? When Frey is sealed. So, eh, I don't really know how viable it is to bring Ainz here. And Isis is free. So, okay. We're going to do an AoE alt there. We're going to send this AoE alt. Guy doesn't do shit for damage. Isis is single target. We have her hit Daggerl. She hasn't gotten any stacks realistically either. We're up to four stacks of Vengeance. It's only going to go higher now. But, I mean, Nami's doing 21k a hit. That's not bad. And then the Despair does 1600 damage. Oh my god, that's so fucking stupid. Okay, but this is it, guys. I mean, we're we're looking good, right? We're doing we're doing what we set out to do, and that is to keep everybody stunned as much as possible. There is like I don't know how how well it would work. You could potentially bring three stun units because you could bring uh, Light Raphael, and you might be able to stun all three of them. But that that is a lot of points. And you're going to be missing out on probably Shizu. And I don't really know how viable that is. Because Shizu has been pretty impactful as far as our damage is concerned. And actually taking out these enemies. And I honestly cannot imagine being here any longer than what we have already been. So Daggirl is almost dead. And then we just need to kill Dino. So we're going to skip ahead a little bit. Um, do we actually kill Daggirl here with this ult? Or do we swap it? I don't know. It kind of depends on what I'm going to do here. Let's skip ahead a little bit. Okay. No, we ult. All right. 224 against Daggerl. Awesome. So that means we would have done, what, 450k on an EX ult. And now Daggerl's dead, which means that now we only have to stun Dino. So this fight is over. We just need, I think, one more AoE ult with Albedo and Dino will die, or we just need a literal butt-ton of six cents of greens that are mostly Albedo-focused, because she's going to do 50 or 60k on that 200% orb, and then we can slowly whittle them down. Whittle him down. So, let's skip ahead to the final turn. There we go, so we got an alt there, we got some follow-up orbs, 33k, so now Dino should be dead on turn 
goddamn 30. Don't try this at home, kids. I did this for content. I would not do this for any other reason. But we're going to stun strike and stun. We're going to debuff him with Shizu and buff ourselves with Shizu. And we will let Albedo <laughs> deal the finishing blow. And I believe I turned her animation on. Yeah, I do. So we can watch it in all of its glory. And we can end this stupid video and I never have to use this unit again until something else comes along that's dumb and that we can stun. Her ult doesn't even look that good. Like, they, so many things went wrong with Albedo. It's actually hilarious. And hilarious in that kind of ha-ha kind of way. Berserk Hellax does... does... 285, and there is the final attack. So it took us 30 turns to do 1.7 million damage worth of HP on Dino. 30 turns. Man, if that doesn't tell you what a shit unit this is, then I don't know what will. But we have done it. We have stunned, in, at least Inferno 1, into oblivion. It might work for Inferno 3, right? But, you know, they have 2.7 million HP, which means another million. Which means this would probably go into, like, turn 60 or something like that. And I ain't about it. If you want to do that, you can do it on your own time. But we did we make Albedo useful? Certainly. Does that mean she's a good unit? Absolutely not. But that's it for me, guys. Take it easy, and I'll see you all later.